And that, to me, has become increasingly uh, a concern because it, it indicates uh, something has happened to their memories. If not, they are all military. They are all obviously sworn to the chain of command. If the president, under the member section 205, classified what they saw as a matter of national security, then they will be violating their oaths of office, their, their, uh, you know, their, 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 their military oaths, their military chain of command structure, um, and they can't say anything under penalty of law. I do believe certain of the astronauts have remembered in more recent years what it is that they really saw, and they are not happy campers. Not at all. I go back to Gene Cernan and that expression that morning. Okay, moving on, we have so much to cover. So Shepard then went around behind the lunar module on the eastern side and took another picture aimed north. This is on the web. This is on the official Apollo Lunar Surface Journal website. When you enhance that, meaning you just bring up the, the gain, there again is this layered structure. There's that tower standing to the north of the lunar module. This is now the raw frame. This is Ken's enhanced copy. This is the duplicate frame scanned of 9301. This is the other frame, which is 9279, taken behind the lunar module, and they all show the same thing, except, of course, look at the stunning detail and quality in Ken's preserved print compared to all the others. That's why we have to go back to original source data. And again, it has to do with the mechanical and chemical composition of ectochrome reversal film. This is a young architect that was part of our team back in uh, 1995 when we stormed the doors of NSSDC. We took, as I said, eight people in. He was with Pratt. Um, he's gone on to a very, very uh, prestigious professional career now. Back then, he was as idealistic as all the rest of us. And so Robert decided to model in primitive 3D CAD what Ken had preserved on this film. And he produced this, which was basically a modeling of the vertical and horizontal crossbars, the buttressing, and from that he was able to derive in the computer a three-dimensional grid model, a working model of what this lattice, this incredible dome structure, I keep talking about a dome, but it's actually a vertical and horizontal lattice, which is the strongest material or strongest geometry that you can use to construct things, and it's made of glass. If we're right, it's made of glass. Now, why is that de rigueur? Because in the current NASA studies, the studies at uh, Los Alamos, when NASA has funded studies into its own moon bases, even before the current you know, return to the moon from the president, they decided that the obvious selection material for use in building the NASA bases on the moon would be glass. The reason is that most of the moon lunar surface is silicon dioxide, which is glass, and glass in a vacuum, if you make it into structural materials, I-beams and girders and rebar and cross-ribbing and all that, most of that is, in fact, um, 10 times stronger than steel. So it makes obvious sense that whoever would build ruins on the moon, when they weren't ruins, built them out of glass that was stronger than steel. So now we're going to go through some other pictures from, this is from Apollo 10, this is 4810. The lunar surface, dark sky, the way we would expect, except if you turn up the gain, you get stunning, astonishing, amazing geometry hanging in the sky. Now this was a print that we ordered through the Lunar Planetary Laboratory before we went to Goddard. And that's why I say when I got Ken's data, and I had that record, the paper trail, of how he had preserved it, who he was, his, his important official position at the LRL. So I knew it was real data. It wasn't fake data, it was real Apollo data. And then I could compare it with what I was able to order through the front door from NASA, side by side. Lo and behold, on this just NSSD print, photographed and, and sent to me by a laboratory there in Houston, is this stunning geometry above the moon. And if you look closely, you can see that there is an incredible complex consistency, a coherence, a geometric coherence of three-dimensional rebar. There are tons of vertical, what we call stringers. Then there's tent-like structures. Obviously, this is in suspension. This is all cantilevered. You know, this is real architectural engineering. It's in ruins. It's been battered to hell by millions of years of micrometeorite erosion and abrasion. 
And so almost nothing is left, but if you have the sophisticated computer scanner technology now, and you order these prints, and what we did later, we got smart, we said, okay, overexpose the surface. We want to see what's in the sky. Just, you know, go in the dark room and overexpose. And they did that, and we got this amazing signal-to-noise quality on umpteen generation. This is a false color image. You can see some of the geometry better if you make it into color, which you can do in the computer now. 